now we're going to commence with the quasi-centennial recipients. And our first gentleman is David Tuhaki. Congratulations. My great-grandfather, Lou Victor Hockey, came to America in the 1800s. He lived first in Green Lake County, Wisconsin. Then he moved from there to where the farm is, Revello, South Dakota. And I'm so proud of him because I have a copy of his first time it went to Washington, D.C., and then it came back to Watertown where he signed it to get his land. And ever since that time, down through the generations, we kept it as a Tehaki homestead. And I'm so proud of him because if it wasn't for him, I didn't know where I was going to live when I was born. And there's another story is the first winter he slept in a neighbor's house in an attic. And he was so proud of getting his land because somebody else was going to get it, but then they didn't show up in five days, so then they changed it to that he could get it after five days. And then he got it and then he lived on there and then our first house was built from um, wood that we got from Gary, South Dakota. That's the first railroad came to America, to South Dakota. And from there on, I'm going to keep the farm going as far as I can. It's rented out right now because I'm up in age where sometimes my back gives me problems and I can't run it anymore. So they rent it out and I do, and we still got it. It's, it's about 228 acres. From Artesian, South Dakota, we have the Dolores Olson Kelsey family. I'll just say a few words here. Um, this is my mother, Dolores Kelsey and her grandfather uh, homesteaded by Artesian, South Dakota in 1883. And to kind of put that in perspective, that's seven years before Wounded Knee. So it's kind of an interesting fact. Um, then Ole T in 1936 and two other proprietors um, after the Depression went and started the Life State, State Bank, which is now, of course, Core Trust. Unfortunately, the stock they had in it isn't worth anything, so we ran out of luck on that one. But that's uh, Ole T. Olson was a proprietor of the, the homestead there. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce the Jensen Farm from Gayville, South Dakota. Congratulations. My gr great grandfather, great grandfather, received a deed in 1869. My grandfather in 1893, his name was James, my father, Mark, in 1842, and we purchased the farm in 1968. To God be the glory, and also thank you to Farm Bureau for what they did to give us this award. Thank you. From Ramona, South Dakota, we have the, the John and Claudia D. Rungs family and Dan and Deanne D. Rungs. Thank you again. Thank you. I'm just going to say um, that this farm is in my husband and his brother's family for 130 years. Um, they came from Switzerland and settled the original Badoos Swiss colony near Lake Badoos. And so we're hoping to pass this on to our boys. And um, they, they had to leave to take care of the bulls. So <laughs> thank you, Farm Bureau. Our next award recipients from Arlington, South Dakota, the Griffith Farm. Congratulations. Uh, our grandmother's name was Athamalno, and at age 21 she came from Wisconsin and homesteaded uh, two miles south of Badger. Uh, five years later she married our grandfather David Griffith, and the farm passed down through our father. Right now, uh, myself and my sister Bev and my brother uh, Delbert are with me, and our husbands, uh, my husband Jim, Bev's husband Ray, and Delbert's daughter Debbie, and all together we own the farm now.
So we have the Tim and Peggy Clark family from Fedora. In the spring of 1887, my great-grandfather was working on the railroad uh, in uh, Dakota Territory. He found a piece of property that no one else had homesteaded uh, because it was so rocky. So he uh, put his claim on that, raised his family, and, uh, and the rest is history. If I ever meet him in the hereafter, I'm going to ask him about those rocks because I'm still working on them. <laughs> And next, we congratulate the Hagen family farm from Brandon, South Dakota. Thank you. Uh, we came, they came from uh, Norway in about uh, 1860-something, early 1860s, and uh, they homesteaded the, the property I'm on in 1872. Presently, my son and I farm, I should say my son farms and I help. And, uh, and I got a little grandson here too, so he's a uh, sixth generation, so. And I'd like to thank the Farm Bureau for what they've done for us. And this is our whole family here. Uh, that's really important on a family farm. Thank you. From Lake Norton, we have the Russ family with us today, Eric and Christy Russ and her parents. Well, I guess I'm the last one to buy it, so I got to speak, so. Uh, it was homestead in 1888, on June 29th. Um, I guess I've been farming with my dad for 20 years, I bought it two years ago. Um, it's been handed down every year. Uh, last June 29th, I married my wife, Christy. And here we are today, so thank you. Next is the Charles Martin Moss family from Polo, South Dakota. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah my name is Chuck Martin Moss. This is my wife, Rosemary. This is my dad, Vic Martin Moss. My mom, Marion. And this is my youngest boy, Kurt Martin Moss. Um, in 1880, my great-grandpa Herman came over from Germany. He spent three years, spent three years working in Nebraska. And then in 1883, took a train to Reheis. Walked about, walked about 20 miles north to homestead the original farmstead. In 1980, my Vic, my dad Vic Marion, purchased it from his great uncle or his uncle Walter. And then from then on, me and my son Kurt and wife Rosemary have been farming it ever since. Thank you. So from Lake Preston, we have the Wade and Lori and Dallas Jensen family with special friend Bree along today uh, from Lake Preston for the Arnie Olson Bow family homestead. Thank you. We uh, don't have much of a speech. We're going to work on it for the 150th. So I've had a bit. We're proud for the award. Thank you. Thank you. And next from Hot Springs, South Dakota, the Wyatt family. Come on up. I My, my brother Harold Wyatt is actually the one that lives on the property now. He wasn't able to come today and he asked us, my, bro brother, my, my brother Leroy and I, to come and get the award. And he worked for Farm Bureau for many years. He had an insurance business. And we're the only ones that I see on this map from West River with 125 years. And Granddad homesteaded there in 1894. 1884 and been in the family ever since. And Leroy here might say a, word, a few words. This is some sixth generation ones here down the line. Uh, very briefly, 
when our grandfather applied for the homestead, we have, this is a copy, but we have the original application that he filed for it. It was $7. We also have the original, this is a copy, of, from the United States of America uh, when he had proved up on it. And this is dated in uh, 1892. That's when he finished his uh, residency of it. Signed by Benjamin Harrison. You remember he was a president way, way back then of the United States. But it also states right on here that this was the 116th year of our country. So for the history that we're dealing with here, 125 year farms, that is longer than the age of our country at that time. Our granddad taught school one year at the very beginning so he could uh, get into town. He didn't have the cabin finished yet. So he went to, actually up to Hill City. We're from Hot Springs, clear down in the West River. And he taught school that winter. The school year then was very long. He finished in March and went back and filed his papers. But uh, that ran in, the, in his genes, I think, because he had a daughter that taught, which was our mother. And I taught for many years, and we have a daughter that's a teacher. So uh, sometimes not only the farm genes, but many of you have had teachers that help support the farm. But thank you, Farm Bureau. From Harrisburg, South Dakota, we have Vernon and Carolyn Slack. Glad to have you and your family. We got three generations on the stage with us today. I'd like to thank the Farm Bureau for the Century Program. I was here with my dad and received the 100 year, and now I'm back with my family. Uh, this, this farm was homesteaded by my great granddad, and then it passed down to, to me and my grand, we've all lived on it down to me. And now there's no buildings there anymore, so there's nobody going to live on it again, but we still got the farm. It'll go down to my great granddaughter someday. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Mike and Julie Elson from Hecla, South Dakota. Congratulations. I'd like to thank. Uh, South Dakota Department of Agriculture and uh, Farm Bureau for this award. Uh, my great grandfather come from Germany. Uh, my grandpa and grandma, a uh, great grandpa and grandma. Their name was uh, Oltman and Lena Elson. So they were German. They weren't Norwegian. But uh, I'm, I would be the fourth generation. We bought it from my mom and dad in 1998 and. Uh, Got the fifth generation coming along, and uh, you can't have a better than a, a farm to raise a family, so it's quite the privilege and honor. So, thank you. From Millbank, we have the Jim and Tammy DeWald family and the homestead of the Holquist farm. All right, um, my great-great-grandfather, Carl Holquist, um, homesteaded in 1888, and then his son, Gus, took over in 1897, and then my grandfather, Bert, took over in 1921, and then my dad took over in 1964, and my brother was taking it over in 2006, but later that year, had died. And at that time, my husband and I, he was the only boy, and my husband and I were in Indiana, and so we had to make a decision to move back to South Dakota and um, buy the family farm to keep it in the family. And so we've been there for seven years. It hasn't been easy, but we're still trying to fix it up and get it back to where it used to be. But um, so I'm glad to be back in South Dakota. Thank you.
Now I'd like to introduce Pat Sotera from Tabor, South Dakota. Congratulations. Um, my, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the state and uh, Farm Bureau for hosting this. I really appreciate it. Uh, my great-grandfather, uh, John Satara, came to the United States from Czechoslovakia in 1875. Uh, he homesteaded the farm that I am currently on in 1885. Um, when my grandfather Frank was three years old, uh, my great-grandfather died in a farm accident at the age of 39. Uh, my great-grandmother and her children uh, continued to run the farm uh, till my grandfather Frank was able to take it over. Um, I bought the farm from my grandmother Emma in 1986. Thank you. From Langford, South Dakota, we have Keith and Patty Ogren and the family of Carl Ogren Homestead. And Kevin, Evan, is going to speak on behalf of the family. Uh, my great-great-grandfather came over from Sweden in 1882, stopped in Langford and haven't left since. So the house we live in actually built in 1911. So I'd like to thank Farm Bureau and the state of South Dakota for putting this on. Thanks. And now I'd like to introduce the Cleland Family Farm from the Arlington Badger area. Congratulations. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, it, our family farm would have been homesteaded uh, by my great, great grandfather, Thomas. Uh, then it went down in generations to his son, Harry. Harry's son, Harold. Uh, current Owner operators are my parents, uh, Don and Carol Cleland, and Dorothy, my aunt Dorothy Cleland. And I am myself, my brothers, and families are fifth generation, and my brothers and my kids are sixth generation. So, thank you. Next we have Mark and Darla Lushke from Millbank, South Dakota. Uh, this is for my mother's side of the family, and we're the fifth generation to own it. And my grandmother and her family came back from the Black Hills where they tried to make a living gardening and beehive, selling honey, in 1941. And I have their first year farm and home management plan, and they were poor. Uh, some numbers of interest, six months in the WPA that my grandfather worked with $240 income. They had a net worth of $136, and this is a family with seven kids. And my mother was a senior in high school, and the farm gross income planned for the next year was $1,319. Uh, the two... I was up, er we were up earlier with the Century Farm. The two farms are two miles apart. Growing up, I spent a lot of my time riding bike between the two farms because the garden and the river, the Yellow Bank River is up there. And I, my grandfather enjoyed trees and banded birds, and that's where I spent my time growing up. And now we enjoy giving our grandchildren uh, walks by the river and uh, sledding and other things that a river and a farm can do for them. We enjoy it. Thank you. And I believe our last recipient this morning, unless there's anybody else out there that uh, is a 125 year farm, come on up if we haven't recognized you. But our, our next 125 year farm is the Bourbon Homestead from Minnehaha County. Congrat congratulations. My grandfather came from Hardunker, Norway, and settled in Trampolo, Wisconsin. In 1875, he decided to come to Dakota Territory, and he homesteaded in Minnehaha County. 
and my dad, Seymour Bourbon, inherited it from him, and now I'm the third generation. And at 92, I'm still managing it so far. Well, folks, uh, this has been quite a celebration today. We celebrate our history of our state by celebrating those farms and ranches for 100 years and 125 years. If there's anybody that we've missed, uh, please get with us afterwards. We also, or, or if you're still here, we can still get you on stage. But we do have extra maps. If you're wanting some of those that might be available for you, just come ask Sarah at the side of the stage for those maps. Uh, the other uh, order of business is we have lunch over here. And those buttons that you've been given, that's your meal ticket to lunch. I would like to take a quick moment on behalf of Governor Dennis Dugard and just say a very good, gracious thank you to South Dakota Farm Bureau, Wayne Smith, Scott Vanderwall for being such a great partner in this uh, process. Thank you, sir. Let's go have some lunch and stay cool and remember to drink some water today.